Welcome, 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 geeks and nerds, girls and boys, to another all-new geek to me Radio. Today, we are doing a Doctor Who edition. We'll be talking with author Richard Denick, who's in charge of the new upcoming 13th Doctor comic from Titan. We'll then talk with Rob Levy of the St. Louis Celestial Intervention Agency, all about his panels that he ran at Dragon Con, and more. Please stand by. We're talking to And if you're driving around the St. Louis area listening to us on 105.3 FM or 1380 AM, thank you very much for hearing us out there in the world, streaming us online. Thank you for finding us. And of course, if you're hearing this after the fact in the podcast form on Google Play, SoundCloud, iTunes, or Podomatic, we thank you very much for subscribing and listening each week. We are going to jump right into it. We're joined now by author Richard Denick, uh, author of many books. Uh, he's also overseen Titan's run of the Doctor Who series. If you're not reading those, I suggest you get out to a local comic book store and pick those up from Titan Comics. And uh, TV writer as well, many things uh, going on. Richard Denick, thanks very much for joining us. Not at all. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. Anytime. So uh, I know you're a huge Whovian. I'm a huge Whovian. We've actually had interviews with uh, Paul McGann and Sylvester McCoy on the show before. Uh, so I'll start out with the easiest question. Who's your favorite doctor? <laughs> uh, my, my answer is the doctor. Okay. Um, <laughs> I, I have to say I do love all of them, uh, each in their own little ways, each for their own idiosyncrasies. Um, my doctor, if you want to put it like that, the one that I grew up with was John Pertwee, mm. uh, um, and then Tom Baker. And, uh, although I have to say that I have to confess that although I loved him to begin with, by the time I was just getting into being a moody teenager, he was really annoying me. <laughs> <laughs> so I was quite glad to see Peter Davison take over, which is why, you know, that's why I think, you know, all the doctors, I have to say all the doctors, because obviously I then went back and discovered Patrick Troughton and William Hartnell and um, uh, and then obviously moved forward with the show as well. And each of those doctors has brought something to the to the role which is unique and, and special. And uh, I always get really nervous about, about a new doctor and I'm, I'm kind of like doubting that it's all going to be okay right up until like the first five minutes of their first story. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a bit of a pattern that I've learned to now just go with. <laughs> yeah, there's that mourning period. Like, I can't believe, because honestly, uh, the first season with uh, Peter Capaldi, I wasn't, I, I don't think it was him. I think it was the writing uh, at, at, in the early part of it. But I feel like once he found Bill in the third series and it just like that took off, I'm like, oh, we need another five seasons of uh, Peter Capaldi and Pearl <laughs> Mackey now. I love the two of them uh, together. Were- they were fantastic together, I think. Um, and I, I've heard a lot of people say something similar to that. But I mean, I, I mean, I loved uh, Twelve and Bill. I thought they were great. Uh, I wrote them for Titan, mm-hmm. and that was that was just fantastic to be able to write them because here was here was a Doctor Who was who I think had finally decided that he was a good man, and therefore could have a bit of fun mm-hmm. and. And Bill just brought that out in him so much um, and allowed him to be, I think, the best doctor he could be. Um, and uh, uh, and so that was, yeah, I agree. Five more series of, of, of uh, Bill and 12. And, and Nardal, even the interactions between Nardal and, and uh, Bill were, were funny a lot of times, too. I think that oh. made for a great interplay when there's more than one companion sometimes. 
See, I like multiple companions. I think one can be a bit uh, tough, mm-hmm. a bit, a bit um, I don't know, introspective maybe a bit. Um, I prefer the TARDIS team. Um, after all, that's how it all started. Right. Um, <laughs> and uh, and you know, if you think about that we had um, Amy and Rory and River kind of like as an occasional character as well, um, there, were, there was a team right there. Um, and uh, obviously Rose and uh, Mickey and Captain Jack, um, they were a team. Um, and so we've had we've had you know, teams in the recent past as well as mm. in the show as well. Uh, I think Her- Harry and Sarah um, worked fantastically well with Tom Baker. Yeah. I think, and obviously, the unit family for me was was family. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, for John Pertwee, uh, and obviously going back to Hartnell, you know, I mean, I just loved those early um, William Hartnell stories, um, particularly with uh, Ian, Susan, and Barbara. And I thought that they were such a great unit, and I've written for them as well on on audio uh, as a great privilege to to write for William Russell. Um, uh, as he was the one who was delivering the the kind of talking book um so yeah i love a team <laughs> yeah and with writing for uh kind of overseeing i guess all the the doctor titans and then writing for them specifically now with this big challenge of you know you've got the the tv shows you've got the uh the big finish series to kind of draw from as far as okay well this is their experience Going into writing for the 13th Doctor, we're going to get Jodie Whittaker here October 7th, I believe. This is a Doctor who we've not seen before. We've, we've not heard her voice, uh, either physically or kind of like the metaphysical sense of having her find her voice yet. That's got to present, I would think, a new challenge for you as a writer. Absolutely. I mean, we had, you know, we had one line to go on. <laughs> <laughs> we had, uh, you know, oh, brilliant. Um but I thought that actually gave us a great deal about her character. Um, and actually, you know, what I did was I went back and, and looked at, at all the doctors and tried to pick out, not right a generic doctor, but to pick, to get right down to the core of the character and see what, what makes that character tick and mm-hmm. therefore what, what their dialogue would be. And then add a bit of what I was in my head, kind of calling Jodieisms, um, <laughs> and uh, and you know, so that we've got basically dialogue that is a little bit cheeky, a little bit fun, kind of a little bit self-deprecating, um, but but confident and and of course doctorish, Doctor Lee. Um, so yeah, no, it was a bit, little bit of a challenge, but you know, at the at the end of the day, every doctor is the doctor, and they do have their their own little verbal ticks. Um, but in, in in you know the depth of the character, the the core is exactly the same. So with uh, the thirteenth Doctor comic, you've got literally all the doctors in it so far. We I just read. Uh the entry for David Tennant's doctor. Uh, This is going to have every doctor as, as it builds up. What can we kind of expect from this series? So, yeah, no, it's, um, it was a little bit of a dream gig really when uh, Andrew James, who's the senior editor at Titan said to me, so what we want to do is have a story with every doctor, uh, including the war doctor. And we kind of want to treat it as, um, almost like a, a, a primer for Doctor Who. So anyone who hasn't seen the show or read the comics can pick that up and go, oh, yeah, so that's what a sonic screwdriver is. That's what a TARDIS is. This is what regeneration does. You know, here's Gallifrey, you know, blah, 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 etc. just everything to do with the show. And working those kind of little aspects into exciting stories and this is a, this is a, it is a one-off uh issue but it's it is a one shot as it were but it's not it is a a bumper issue in that it's uh about 70 pages so we do have three four five pages even six or seven maybe to, uh, to play with with each of the doctors um the stories vary in length and um we either we either enter the story very late in the day or it's just a little kind of vignette 
uh, type story with um, each of the doctors in and 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 uh, quite a few of the companions. Um, I'm a fan uh, of the team, so I uh, I have uh, included as many companions as I can <laughs> um, within given the given the given the fact that we have only three, four, five, six pages to play with on each doctor, um, and uh, you know included a few uh, fun things. There are some there are some kind of like I guess Easter eggs. Uh, in there if you're if you are a doctor who fan if you do know the stuff uh, if you know the show you know the history there will be lots of things for you to spot in the that i've described for the artist to draw um for them to put in or little snippets of dialogue and there's a lot of dialogue that you might recognize sure. so it's it's a, it's a great it's a really great uh I'm, I'm so excited about it i think it's like to me this is the unofficial uh, kind of 55th anniversary special. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, you know, 13 Doctors and, uh, in fact, 14 Doctors. And, uh, yeah, it's going it's to be great. So I would urge you to rush out and buy it. That's out on the 9th of October. And I know you said uh, the BBC was very kind. I'm, I'm quite jealous that you already have a 13th screwdriver. Um, <laughs> did they let you, uh, as you're doing your research for the writing on this new 13 series coming out from Titan Comics, did they let you or did you get the chance to speak with Jody or any of the new TARDIS team or even Chris Chibnall sit down and, and kind of go through some stuff with you at all? Not, not, not before. Um, very kindly, uh, uh, BBC Worldwide, uh, BBC Studios, uh, BBC America, uh, they kind of like managed to club together and, and, and I was signing on the BBC America booth at uh, San Diego Comic Con and they gave me the screwdriver. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> there it is, uh, glowing yellow in its in its silver casing, um, and also I did actually go to the uh, BBC uh, America uh, party. Oh, nice! Uh, af- uh, afterwards, and met Jody, and met uh, Chris, second time I've met Chris Chippen actually because I had met him at a drama writers festival that the BBC holds kind of almost on an annual basis. But um, uh, Jody was just incredible. I mean, a force of nature, such a lovely person. She, um, I was, I literally walked in and walked up to the bar, and uh, she was at the bar, and she turned around from talking to the person she had been talking to because she was working the room fantastically <laughs> and just went, hi, I'm Jodie. And I was like, yeah, I know. <laughs> um, and, and she said, what do you do? I said, I, I know, I'm writing 13th Doctor comic at the moment. And she goes, oh, that's fantastic. You know, blah, blah, blah. starts talking. And I said, obviously, I'm so excited. And I said, um, uh, and my daughter is so excited. And she went, oh, how old's your daughter? And I said, well, she's 13, but she's 14 on Monday, and I'm missing her birthday. And she went, give me a phone. <laughs> so I gave her, I gave her my phone, and she recorded a message for Emily, and um, fantastic, really great That's message. That's great, uh, and that was just amazing. Uh, and then later on, I was talking to Chris Chibnall um, at the same party, and somebody very kindly <clears throat> reminded him that last year at Comic Con, while I'd been signing at the Titan booth. Um, uh, actually, Twelfth Doctor Comics. I cosplayed. I never cosplayed. It's my one and only cosplay. I cosplayed as the Thirteenth Doctor in her reveal outfit, in the grey hoodie, yeah. uh, grey grey coat and black hoodie, and a blonde wig. And I was made up and everything. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and uh, so Chris Chibnall went, no, no, no way. Show me, show me. So I showed him on my phone. And he like dragged me across to Jody and said, "Have you seen this? Have you seen this?" <laughs> and played it to her. And she went, "Yeah, I saw it. My husband showed it to me." And he said, "If the people who are writing Doctor Who are this are this much behind you, you've got nothing to worry about." No doubt. And I was like, "Oh wow, that that is fantastic." I said to her, "That is exactly the reason I did it because there was a lot of kind of negativity around at the time of the announcement, and I wanted to kind of show solidarity and." Um, I was so happy that she, her husband had showed her that and that it made her feel better. And then she looked at me and she went, that's you? <laughs> and she made me pose for a photo with uh, holding up the my phone with the video on it. Uh-huh. So Jody Whittaker took a picture of me at Comic-Con. <laughs> nice. <laughs> that's amazing. Well, I'm glad so, to hear that she's that. I mean, I, I would think because I watched her in uh, Broadchurch and I loved her on that. 
Uh, so I, w- I would think that she's someone who, like you said, I'm glad to hear a confirmation that she is as wonderful a person as I thought she would be. Oh, definitely. I mean, uh, as I say, force of nature, the most lovely. And it, I mean, she's actually, it's a bit like meeting the, the doctor. Uh, you can imagine uh, very energetic, very positive, um, a real powerful presence in the room. Mm. Um, there's no mistaking that Jodie's there, you know. And I think that anyone who kind of like fears that the doctor will lose um, any of the character's kind of presence uh with jody is uh has nothing to worry about <laughs> that's that's good to hear i'm very excited for october 7th when we get to see her premiere on oh. uh, bbc america over here so with uh with the doctor who be- being the writing you've got the brand new doctor launch what's it like at titan comics do you guys have a watch party do you guys partner up with bbc and have like some kind of a huge blowout there we'll get the answer to that question right after this so stand by Hi, this is Alex Kingston. Welcome back. No spoilers, but you're listening to geek to me Radio. And we're back live broadcasting on this uh, All Doctor Who edition. We'll end up talking with Rob Levy from the St. Louis Celestial Intervention Agency in just a bit here. Uh, right now, we are finishing up our interview with Richard Dinnick, who is the uh, overseer of the Titan Comics line of Doctor Who Comics writing for the 13th Doctor comic coming out, I think he said October 9th, so just two days after the premiere of Jodie Whittaker's brand new Doctor on the BBC. Uh, and we were talking before about uh, what they do when you know a new Doctor comes. Is there a huge party? Is it an event that you guys do at the Titan Comics office uh, in conjunction with BBC? And here is his answer. <laughs> you think it's all kind of a little bit kind of... Uh... Uh, blue tack and shoestring kind of thing really <laughs> um, I mean Titan's not a, a huge company it's um, a very um, select company if you will in terms of the of the titles that it does and it's, you know, it's been a huge success remember that they only became a comics publisher a few years back that's really. hard to believe um, I know it's amazing they come so far in such a short period of time um, if there if there is a if there's a watch party with the Titan crew, I haven't been invited. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't feel left out, then that's good. If they're not even inviting you, <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, I, I, but of course, we will all be you know uh, messaging each other and calling each other and stuff like that, and all over social media. I should think afterwards, uh, because as, um, as far as I know, no one's seen very much of uh, the scripts. Uh, with with the new doctor at all no one really knows what the hell's going on mm. uh what what's going to happen what the storylines are i mean chris chibnall's just come out i think the other day and said you know they're going to be no daleks they're going to be no side men there's no old characters this mm. is all going to be brand new doctor who and if you think back to one of the fan favorite series um and i'm going to kind of contradict myself a little bit because that that first season of um uh, Tom Baker sits stories with uh, with Harry and Sarah. With you know, it did have Sontarans and it did have Daleks and it did have Cybermen, but it also had fantastic other other brand new uh, Brain and Morbius. Well, that was a bit later, but you know, all those Philip Hinchcliffe ones, um, uh, Terror of the Zygote. Maybe this is the second it, season of Tom Baker actually. Ark in um, Space, I think, was one of that one of his first season with the Ark in Space, which I love that that story. Fantastic, a little bit too much bubble wrap, but hey, it was the seventies, <laughs> right? Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, absolutely. And I think it's going to be like that. It's going to be fresh. It's going to be new. You don't have to bring uh, fifty-five years worth of of knowledge to it to enjoy it, which I think is you know what it needs to do every now and again. If you think about you know how Russell brought it back in two thousand and five, you didn't need to know anything about Doctor Who to enjoy that new show. Um, and it was very different, and I think this is going to be different again. And talking about writing, too, uh, with all the other stuff you've done, the TV writing, uh, you've uh, done an episode of Thunderbirds Argo for Amazon, I believe, correct? Yes, that's right. Yeah, no, that was uh, that's was awesome fun. We had, um, I don't know how big it was in the, in, in the States uh, back in the 60s, and it was repeated over here a lot on TV in the intervening years. Um, a show called Thunderbirds, which was from a creator called Jerry Anderson, who also did 
Space uh, 1999 and yeah, Stingray yeah. and stuff like that, all done with puppets. And this new version, this new iteration is a CGI uh, action series. So that was amazing to go and write for those characters. Uh, and my favourite, it's, it's an episode that kind of focuses on Lady Penelope and Parker, uh, who are two of my favourite characters from from that show. So that was that's awesome. That's I hope that's going to be shown sometime uh, in the next few months. <laughs> um, if it isn't shown in, in the next few months, they might be splitting the series, so it might be early next year if it's not later this year. Okay, that's something to look for on Amazon. I know with people uh, streaming, I mean, the streaming services have completely changed the way we watch TV uh, with uh-huh. Netflix and Amazon and Hulu. Uh, With Netflix, Lost in Space uh, took a lot of people by surprise. It did really well. And I understand you're doing a comic for uh, kind of based off that new series. Yes, that's right. Yeah, that too. Uh, Very fortunately, I'm very lucky that um, Robert Napton, uh, who is uh, vice president of of comics over there at Legendary, he um, he and I were already talking about a different project, uh, which is my own take on Robin Hood called Rob. Um, and uh, and then he said, uh, "Well, you you're a massive um, Irwin Allen fan because I've been banging on about Lost in Space and Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea and Time Tunnel and all the rest of it." And um, and he said, "Well, we've got a Lost in Space adaptation, you know, a kind of reboot coming up um, on TV. Would you like to do the tie-in comic?" And I was like, "Would I?" <laughs> <laughs> so we. Um, and that was amazing. That was kind of almost like the polar opposite of Doctor Who in that I was given, I was sent all the scripts. I was given access to kind of almost, almost rushes of the episodes before they were kind of finished and hmm. ready and um, met with the executive producers, you know, you name it. I just had full access because they wanted to get it absolutely right. Uh, purely because the comic fits in, very tightly with the with the actual episodes with the actual tv episodes um so it was important that we had the time frames yeah and of course the characters absolutely spot on and the art has been provided by an amazing uh almost photorealistic uh artist called sid and uh he's done a fantastic job on on bringing all the all the uh actors to life and talking about the actors and that, I've uh, it, it's kind of you can draw a little bit of a parallel with uh, some of the gender swapping you're doing for roles. We're getting our first female doctor now, finally after fifty four years plus. Uh, we yeah. Parker Posey. I was only familiar with her from the Christopher Guest series of movies, and to have <laughs> yeah. her as Doctor Smith, sometimes she would just give me chills. Uh, just the yeah. way she portrayed Doctor Smith in that series, it blew me away. That a really different portrayal, isn't it? It's yeah. Um, it's not at all the kind of, uh, and in fact, if you go back and watch the original series of Lost in Space from the 60s, those first few kind of black and white uh, uh, episodes, the first series, are kind of quite serious. And Smith is a lot more scheming and, and nasty mm-hmm. than he later became. He later became kind of this kind of almost nasty avuncular type um uh who dealt in kind of high camp and uh, i loved him and uh, and parker posey's come along and just delivered something totally fresh and different and new um and it, it's been a great i mean i just love the show i think uh, i was very nervous <laughs> sure yeah uh, before, before uh, well, even before i knew i was i was going to be writing for the comic uh, sitting down and watching the show i was thinking wow this is going to be this is this, well her hearing about it i thought this is going to be interesting um, because I wasn't the biggest fan of the movie, um, although it was it was fine. It was didn't blow me away, right? Um, and I was kind of nervous that the TV show was going to do something similar, and it hasn't. It's it's gone its own way, and it's kind of it's really done what the original premise was, really, which is to which was you know Swiss Family Robinson in space, and really have them out there and lost and and in a survival situation, and not kind of a monster of the week thing that it became on on telly in the right. 60s yeah it was it was uh very surprising we we binged it pretty quickly because once we start an episode we're like well, well now we have to find out what happens with that thread yeah, going yeah, forward so yeah. i mean the, i think the whole cast is fantastic yeah it's agreed. really good ensemble cast uh just amazing just amazing and the scripts are so tight they're so good just reading them 
before I saw the actual episodes, just reading the scripts, the writers, you know, wow. So was there anything <laughs> you were surprised by when you got to read them first before seeing them in action? Was there anything you were surprised by how they did something or anything like that? I think I was, I think I was really pleasantly surprised by how Ignacio uh, just brought such warmth to the role of Don West. Mm-hmm. Uh, on the page, he comes across, I mean, he is a kind of, scoundrelish quite Han Solo-ish kind of character yeah um and in the script he just feels a bit colder and a bit more abrupt and a bit more I don't know but but the performance is just, is just is so warm and lovely and he's such a nice guy um you can when you meet him you can see what, how he's brought you know just a little bit of himself to the role uh so that that surprised me um I was really really pleased uh with, with just yeah, the whole family ensemble uh i think was just brilliant actually everything everything works so well yeah it's one of those uh cases where a lot of times you can read something on a page and then it just takes the right actor uh to bring that to life in a certain way uh which i'm I, again excited to see what jody whittaker does with uh 13th doctors as we talked about it's always one of those things that you're sad to see the last doctor going your word, how is this show going to go on? And then you end up getting the doctor like, this is the best incarnation ever. So it's always fun to see right. how those changes are brought about by the uh, different actors. I do want to mention uh, Richard Dennick. If you want to check out any of his books, uh, the, the TV stuff he's done, his comic books, you can go to Richard Dinnick, D-I-N-N-I-C-K dot com. And of course, uh, you can get links to all of his things there. Is there another uh, non-Doctor Who book you're working on? Any uh, other novels or anything like that coming out soon we can uh, keep an eye out? So, as I say, the, the uh, Robin Hood, uh, my take on Robin Hood, Rob, is coming out from Legendary quite soon. I have a, uh, a TV show uh, uh, optioned and, and in development at the moment uh, called Surface Tension, which is a, a crime drama. Um, no other books that I can talk about, I don't think, at the moment, or uh, not much else I can talk about. <laughs> legally. Um, <laughs> illegally, yeah, exactly. Um, uh, yeah, we'll just have to watch this space. But, yeah, if you go to that website or catch me on Twitter, um, at Richard Dinnick, um, then, uh, you know, you'll be up to date because I'm not backwards at coming forwards. <laughs> gotcha. And, of course, keep an eye out for the latest uh, Doctor Who comics as they get the road to the 13th Doctor coming out at Comics Titan on Twitter or Titan-Comics uh, for that website. Richard Dinnick, I cannot thank you enough for taking time out of a Sunday to uh, join me on the air and <laughs> talk about all the uh, the cool things you've got going on. Hey, not at all. My pleasure. My absolute pleasure. We'll have to do it again sometime once uh, 13 has finished her first season. We can come on and kind of discuss what we thought. Definitely. Let's right. do that. Perfect. Thank <laughs> you so much. Enjoy the rest of your day. And you. Thank you. Thank you. There he goes, Richard Dinnick, looking for the 13th Doctor to premiere on BBC and BBC America on October 7th. It's been announced, so keep an eye out for that. We're going to come back talking more Doctor Who with Rob Levy of the St. Louis Celestial Intervention Agency right after this break. Please stand by. This is Paul McGann, the 8th Doctor. You're listening to geek to me Radio. We are back. Here on geek to me Radio, going to take a quick moment to tell you about one of our sponsors, Marcus Theaters. I've seen a ton of movies this past uh, week and a half. We saw The Nun. We saw The New Predator. We ended up seeing Peppermint. We saw um, The uh, Simple Favor. Uh, a lot of movies. And uh, if you go to see them in the Marcus Theater, like we kicked back at uh, the Marcus Theater in De Pair. We saw Peppermint. It was great. We got uh, f- popcorn and soda for the wife and I. We kicked back in those big, comfy dream lounger seats, and it was just phenomenal. And if you're a fan of classic movies, maybe you're like, well, a lot of the movies are out now. I kind of miss. Well, th- guess what? They've got a uh, all sorts of retro theater going on right now. We just lost Burt Reynolds. They've got $5 admissions at select locations. They're showing Smokey and the Bandit. Burt Reynolds, Jackie Gleason, Sally Field. Uh, and they've got all these other retro movies they've got going on, too. If you go to the website, Marcus Theaters. Dot com. They've got uh, some selections coming up for the Horror Fest in October. You can check out uh, the original It. They'll be showing a Halloween, uh, the original one with Michael Myers. A lot of great 
movies. Mission Impossible Fallout, we just, uh, Max and I were discussing off air, just crossed the 750 million mark worldwide. That's still in theaters. You can get out and see that. Now the highest grossing movie in the Mission Impossible franchise. Uh, maybe you want to go check out The Shining. That's part of their Fright Nights thing as well. And they've got their rom-com series coming up. October, they're showing Clueless, October 14th and 15th. My Best Friend's Wedding, which I will say is one of my guilty pleasure movies uh, with Julia Roberts, November 11th and 12th. Love Actually, which is, uh, I watch it every Christmas when I'm putting up the tree, that and Batman Returns. Love Actually on the big screen, December 9th and 10th. Check out the website. Get your tickets right there. Check out the locations that are closest to you. Look up their food and drink menu. So if you're like my wife and need some time to make your decision, she can check out the website and know what she wants before she gets there. All done at MarcusTheaters.com. Check them out for all sorts of movie deals going on all the time. I highly recommend Marcus Theaters. We're going to take our next break. Coming back, talking with Rob Levy of the St. Louis Celestial Intervention Agency, all about his panel hosting at Dragon Con. Stand by. Hello, my name is Sylvester McCoy. I want you to listen to Geek to Me a Radio. Otherwise, if you don't, I'll cry. Don't make the Seventh Doctor cry, people. Don't do it. Listen to Geek to Me Radio. And you also should check out discoverstcharles.com. That website, discoverstcharles.com, our premier sponsor. They've been with us since the beginning. Uh, the show would not be on the air without their help and their support. If you are driving around right now and you're listening to us and you're like, oh, what are we going to do later today? Head down to St. Charles. Take a walk through Frontier Park. Uh, check out some of the historic architecture. Go shopping up and down Main Street. You're thinking to yourself, oh, you know what? We don't have dinner plans yet. Well, guess what? St. Charles has you covered with a lot of of restaurants. They're getting a sugar fire down there on Main Street, right, right where the uh, winery of the Little Hills used to be. So that's very exciting. But there's a ton of places up and down Main Street uh, to eat, shop, dine. There's a little deli uh, just uh, if you're facing Picasso's Coffee, just to the right of that, that's great. They even let us bring our dog inside the restaurant. We have a little dog, mind you. It's not a big dog, but they let us bring him inside. He sat at the table with us while we had lunch there today. It's fantastic. Uh, but there's a lot going on in St. Charles. There's events to check out. We will be telling you a lot more about their Legends and Lanterns event. If you're a Halloween fan, and let's face it, who isn't? Go check out Legends and Lanterns, where you can interact with living history characters like Lizzie Borden, Baron Samedy, Guy Fox, Edgar Allan Poe. Uh, it's a great time if you're familiar with their Christmas traditions thing that they have going on every year. This is just like that, but for Halloween. So bring the kids down. It's a family-friendly event. Uh, it's not scary or for adults only. It's a lot of fun. If you're looking for something new to do, if you're bored with all the haunted houses and other things to do in St. Louis for Halloween, well, then check out Legends and Lanterns. Check out St. Charles anytime is a good time to head on down there. Plan your trip now. Discover stcharles.com. We've been kind of focusing on Doctor Who. We had a great interview with Richard Dinnick, the author who's working on the Titans comics line of Doctor Who, which has been fantastic. I've, I've read them all so far. Uh, they've, I think the only ones they haven't done so far are Doctors 1 and 2 and Doctors 5 and 6. They've gotten a series out for all of them. They have a current 7th Doctor series that's out right now, which is why Max played Sylvester McCoy coming back. And if you're a Doctor Who fan in St. Louis, you need to check out the Celestial Intervention Agency. And we've got... On the phone with us right now from the St. Louis CIA, Rob Levy. Thanks very much, Rob, for jumping on air again. Oh, no, thank you for having me. No problem. So you, uh, I was discussing with Max how much I just am ridiculously envious of you because, yeah, I'm going to go down to Dragon Con, James. I'm going uh, to host the 12 Doctor and Bill panel. I'll be talking with Pearl Mackey, and, and I'm like, ah, how can I be Rob Levy? So uh, I'm congratulations <laughs> on hosting the panel, and I hate you at the same time. <laughs> Um, well, it's interesting. You know, Dragon Con had um, 80,000 people this year, and they have this whole massive amount of programming. So if, even if you like things other than Doctor Who, I know we're talking about Doctor Who here in a second, but they had Gina Torres uh, there yeah. from Firefly. Which Alias. They now had the entire cast of Firefly there. Um, they had people from Sesame Street there this year, which was which was pretty awesome. I got to meet Bob, Luis, and Gordon from Sesame Street, and I'll freely admit it, a little bit of me cried. Oh, um, that's cool. So, yeah, I did a couple panels. Um, we'll, we'll, work our, we'll work our way up to Doctor Who. I did a, a Lost panel, uh, a guest panel for Lost. And How did they uh, find it? Had, 
Well, Henry Ian Cusick didn't find it. He ended up um, missing the panel because the show he's on was doing reshoots. Oh. So it was just Mira Furlan and I talking about uh, Lost and sort of the craft of making that show and things like that. And then uh, I did a Smallville panel with Michael Rosenbaum and uh, Tom Welling. That's great that he's out there doing the cons. Tom Welling, uh, I know he was hesitant. Uh, but And he's he's fun. But uh, have you ever seen Rosenbaum? He's insane. Oh, I know. So he's, he's great. We've had him on air before. He's fantastic. Um, so, yeah, I just kind of knew that was going to be bonkers. And it was <laughs> bonkers in every sense. I mean, he's just... Uh, first of all, he's a complete gentleman. And he's really, really nice, mm-hmm. but he's just he's just clearly insane um, <laughs> in the best way. It's great. And then I did a panel with uh, Jennifer Morrison from Once Upon a Time and yeah. House and How I Met Your Mother, and she's also produced and dir- directed a film called Snow Dogs. Um, so we talked a little bit about that, and that was that was pretty cool. But uh, also a Shield panel, which was neat. A lot of people from Shield. There's a lot of buzz about that, and. Um, mm. You know, none of the Marvel people, even if they're on the TV Marvel, they're not talking anything. I mean, they, they don't give away anything, those those Marvel people. It's because really Disney will sue them into oblivion if they do. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> I think they all like working. Yeah. Um, but getting getting to the Doctor Who stuff. So Catherine Tate was there, who I know is a friend of, of, of the podcast. And um, so what she does now is, you know, she's like, you know, I am not very good at remembering the names, the actors, and all the sci-fi stuff. So I just kind of just go out there and do my thing. So she comes out on stage, and you know, she talks to the audience, and she'll ask her questions. But she'll have members of the audience come out on stage, and they'll come up to, us, they'll come up to them on stage, and she'll be like, "Who are you? What's your name?" She'll like get right in their face, tell me something about you, um, and then she'll do a little bit of. Um, it's very much like her, her her comedy shows that she did, you know, those little bits and pieces. Yeah. She talked a little bit about, you know, David Tennant or John Berman and things like that, but it wasn't your conventional Q&A, and it was just absolutely bonkers. She went out and did, um, I think, three solo panels that just everyone loved. You know, people on panel got to come up, at, you know, got to come up on stage and just sort of talk to her like a normal, like a little one-on-one mini conversation, and that was a lot of fun. And then she did a panel uh, the last morning of the convention with John Barrowman, which was just unrelentingly crazy. Uh, the <laughs> two of those together, um, Barrowman sort of got her. Uh, did a little fine tuning with her. It's like, you know, you'll be comfortable on cons. These are your people. You'll be great. And it totally shows because their stick together is just, it's just an insane double act. And I can't really describe it other than it was just absolutely the most bizarrely insane thing you'd ever seen. Uh, they also had Nick Frost there from uh, Shaun of the Dead and yeah. that whole series of movies. He could not be a nicer guy. Uh, just And he was on Doctor Who with Santa Claus. He's just a lovely lovely person i um did moderate his panel uh rob bowen uh from the brick track moderated uh his panel and you know i went to his table and said hi and talked to him for a little bit and he's like how peter i said you said how's peter he goes, he's great he goes well tell him i said hi and then i ended up going down to peter's table to ask him something later he said nick frost says hi and then peter's like oh well tell him. So i was going back and forth between the <laughs> two of them because they were in separate rooms um so that was neat but getting on to the Doctor Who. Actually, right there, I'm um, going to stop you right there because uh, we're that's the perfect yes. setup. We're going to take a quick break, our last break. Sure. We're going to come back, and that's what we'll come back with Rob Levy talking about Doctor Who 12 and Bill at Dragon Con right after this. Stand by. Hello, this is Catherine Tate. Donna Noble is listening to geek to me Radio. Donna Noble has been saved. Donna Noble is listening to geek to me Radio. Donna Noble has been saved. Donna Noble is listening to geek to me Radio. Donna Noble has been saved. We are back in our Doctor Who show. We are talking with Rob Levy of the St. Louis Celestial Intervention Agency all about Doctor Who, as we do when he's uh, been on the show before, a frequent guest and friend of the show. Uh, Rob, before we get into uh, highlighting the uh, 12 and Bill panel, uh, tell people, I think you guys will all be at first Friday for the Doctor Who night, and then tell people where they can find the St. Louis CIA if they want to get involved in the St. Louis area. Sure. So the St. Louis CIA is the uh, oldest Doctor Who club in North America, which is pretty cool. And we're based in St. Louis. Uh, Our next general meeting is going to be October the 20th. And that's at the Booter branch of the St. Louis uh, Public Library. Uh, you can find us on Facebook. Uh, you just type in, you know, 
Doctor Who Celestial Intervention Agency. And then also we're online at uh, stlcia.org, and we meet you know pretty regularly. And then we're going to be doing uh, something with First Friday, which is going to be on December 7th at the Science Center. They are bringing in a guest. Uh, I, I know they're still working on that. But I don't know who the guest is going to be, but they're working on having a Doctor Who guest. Uh, there'll be Doctor Who trivia and cosplay, and they're showing some some episodes. I'm not sure what the episodes are going to be yet. And we're going to be doing a panel, which I'm sure, James, will will see you around doing something um, with that as well. But, uh, yeah, first Friday at the Science Center, it's Doctor Who. It's insane. Um, James will kind of keep everybody posted on that as details emerge. Exactly right. And uh, so we've just got about two minutes left. Uh, tell yeah. us all about you got to run the panel with uh, Peter Capaldi and Pearl Mackey. So first, first thing about Peter Capaldi, they were both there two days. Uh, Capaldi decided he wanted to walk around the convention. So all the nights he was at the convention, he's just walking around like an ordinary guy with oh, no security, just saying amazing. hi to people, buying drinks for people, um, taking <laughs> pictures with people, and just being a fan like an ordinary person, right? Um, it almost became like, where's Waldo, right? It was great. Um, Pearl Mackey was just very, very lovely. She's kind of new to the convention thing. She's got a lot of things going on with her career. Um, she's really capitalized on this really great turn in Doctor Who, and her career is taking off. Good. She is great. She's a big fan of Beyonce. She was talking about that and just sort of, um, you know, what Doctor Who has done for her with her career. Capaldi was interesting because he talked about at the panel um, – I asked him, you know, how he first got into Doctor Who, and he was talking a lot about watching, you know, a lot of the early episodes and how much he really loved them and what he what he really loved about them. Uh, we talked a little bit about what he's doing next. He'll be doing um, a, a film adaptation of great of uh, David Copperfield that's coming out next year. He's going to be one of the actors involved in in that. Huh. And uh, he, for now, I asked them if they were going to do Big Finish, and for now, it looks like they're not really going to mess with Big Finish. Capaldi's kind of like, you know, what's on TV is my doctor. I'm kind of done. Um, but you never know. He also didn't really say much about doing anything for the 60th. I tried to get something out of him for that. And I think, you know, I think he's going to play it by ear. But he is very much looking forward to a post-Doctor Who career. Um, he did talk about, you know, when his he took a lot of questions from the audience, which is great. Um, he did talk, you know, a lot about playing the guitar, um, you know, somebody asked him, like, hey, you know, we played the guitar and on the tank. And he's like, well, you do understand that this is a TV show, and I can't really play guitar that well. So, which <laughs> I thought was pretty funny. But he, you know, he talked about filming that scene on the guitar, on the tank with the guitar. Uh, he did talk about working uh, with Jenna Coleman and for how the dynamic worked with Jenna Coleman versus the dynamic with Bill Potts. That was really interesting to hear talk about, you know, the dynamics between the companions. Also, and I know I know show. that uh, that Bill and uh, both uh, Pearl Mackey and uh, Peter Capaldi are doing the Wizard World circuit, so we might hopefully see them come through St. Louis. We're up against the end of the clock. Rob Levy, thank you so much yeah. again for being on air. I greatly appreciate it, and uh, we'll have you on again before First Friday. And if you want to find us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at geek to me Radio, we'll keep you apprised of all things geek, Doctor Who, and otherwise, so follow us there. Until next week, my friends. That's our show! This is geek to me Radio! Thank you, Planet Mondo! Good night!